Hello, welcome to today's chapter on property management. We're going to talk a little bit about what a property manager is, the job and how they get hired. Uh, you're going to see that it's very analogous to like a real estate agent and the listing agreement. Now, it's funny, we talked about that prop managing property was a licensed required activity. So let's see if I can pull this up and do this. There are many states, and I guess I can't do it with a full screen going on here. Now maybe I can do this. There are many states that require licensing, but it's all over the board. So if you look on the screen here, here's some examples. So for instance, Idaho, Maine, and, Mon and Vermont do not require any license to engage in property management. None at all. All right. Now, the other side of that is you go to places like Montana, Oregon, South Carolina. They actually have a special license if you want to manage property where you can become a property manager, but not necessarily a real estate broker. So it's just a man property manager's license. Then you get states like California, Florida, Nevada, Texas, Georgia. These states all require a second license on top of the real estate broker license. Now I know for a fact Nevada it does because I actually, we actually looked at opening a brokerage there with my company and it was just such a really strange state when it came to the real estate laws. But here you see the vast majority of the differences. You've got a state that requires no license. You've got a, a, some states that only require just the manager's license. And then you can see some states that require multiple license to manage properties. Now, the rest of the states that I didn't mention in here is because they actually manage property under what's under their broker license, all right? It's uh, it's called a unified license, meaning that they can do multiple things with that same license. If you're not in one of these states that we have mentioned, um, then your license allows you to buy, sell, trade, lease, exchange, manage, list, rent, consult with your broker's license, both residential, both commercial, so you can sell and you can lease and you can manage property. Uh, and like I said, the exceptions are just these nine or 10 states here that are different. So as a property manager, you are entrusted with three goals or three guiding principles. You must achieve the uh, owner, the property owner's objective. You must generate income for the property owner, and you must preserve the asset from falling into disrepair. So, and you can do that by several different ways here to make sure that you preserve the value. So the question I want to ask to you is of these three items, which one do you think is actually the most important of the three. Go ahead and hit the pause button. Think about it and come back. All right, we're back. Of the three of these, the most important one for a property manager is to preserve the asset. Most of you probably wrote, oh, generate income. Well, there are actually times that you as a property manager will schedule that unit to maybe not be generating income. You know, when you do a turnover between tenants, well, it's going to be down. We're going to paint the walls. We're going to put new carpet in. So you can actually schedule it to not generate income. There may be situations arise where you cannot achieve his objective or her objective as the investor. But most certainly, 
you always want to make sure that you preserve or increase the value of the property. You do not want it to fall into disrepair by making sure that you get good tenants, making sure that you are able to collect the rents on those tenants. You want to make sure that we do all the care for the property, the maintenance that we're going to talk about, hire the proper staff. You want to make sure you track all of the money and report to the owner. So while we think that making money is everything, the reality is preserving the asset is the single most important thing that a property manager can do. Now, when it comes to managing property, there are now in this world many, many places that will use actual apartment managers. You know, there are corporations. There's a huge company in Indianapolis, Indiana called Eli Lilly. A buddy of mine actually has uh, several rentals that he rents to Lilly, the corporation. And then what happens is when their executives come from throughout the world, they actually put them up in Eli's property and they may stay two or three weeks or a month or two. And it's way cheaper than putting them in a hotel room. So he could, you could manage corporate properties, small residential real estate. That's the most typical property manager that most of us think about is doing that. A big area right now is homeowners associations. There are REITs or syndicates that manage property. And then there's off, obviously building owners. It says office building, but could be a retail building, could be a warehouse, could be uh, a multi-flex or a flex space multi-tenant. So any of these are where most of the property management comes from. Now, in the last five or 10 years, there's some new areas that are coming on board. Matter of fact, even since this book was written, there are some new areas that come on board. We've got community association managers. And when we talked about some of those states over here, um, I believe like for Florida, Texas, and Georgia, um, they actually have a special license for community association managers that's directly for just that one little niche market right here. We've got that over 55 housing. There are uh, places that do manufactured homes or mobile home like trailer parks. I know a gentleman who is the head of Franklin Investments. They own about 6,000 mobile homes throughout the United States. You've got resort housing, people that own houses in resort areas. Well, that one is about as close as, as to the new uh, business that you can get. That's not listed on here. You might want to throw it in is this whole Airbnb management. Uh, I know a lot of guys that were in this resort world kind of housing um, have now shortened their length of leases down to make them day leases or three day leases and are doing uh, resort. Uh, buddy of mine owns something in uh, Vail. And instead of doing a six month rental to a tenant or a year, like most of us would think a tenant is, he has now decided in the last couple of years, he just rents it out for the weekend in an Airbnb style. So that's not even listed on here. Um, there are concierge services that can be provided. There is corporate property management. That was what we were talking about. There are leasing agents. Now, here's it's important that we understand this. A leasing agent typically is a separate, distinct job. A lot of management companies will have a dedicated leasing agent inside of their management company because it it is an animal of a different color there are is some huge differences between being a good property manager and being a good list leasing agent a lot of management companies will 
have their manager lease the property, but there could be a separate distinct person. When you start getting into the huge commercial world, there are many, many companies that do nothing but solely lease property. And it's not uncommon for you to drive by a commercial property and maybe see two signs on it. One sign may be for sale where they are brokering and the other is for lease where the leasing agent is trying to find tenants to fill some of the spaces in there. So it's not uncommon to have those two different signs that are there. Now, there are professional associations inside of this. As you can see, I've taken the liberty to go ahead and remove those because once again, there is no question on the test that says, name five associations. So it's not really worth the time. You guys have enough stuff to learn and memorize without having to me give you stuff to memorize just to mess with you because I know it's not going to be on the exam. When a property manager gets retained for services, they will be using a management agreement. Now, what I want you to see, and we can get rid of this over here, is that a management agreement is going to be very analogous to something we've already seen. We've talked about a listing agent that works with the seller is going to be using a listing agent. Let's do this. Uses a listing agreement, right? That is how a seller places his property on the MLS by creating agency with a listing agent and they would sign a listing agreement. And if you remember that confers special agency to that listing agent. It allows them to do one thing in one area of this seller's life, i.e. they are going to market the property for sale. Well, the very similar concept is this property manager is going to sign a management agreement with the landlord, which is the other version of a seller. And the only difference here is that remember, the agency that gets conferred in a property management association or agency type is general agency. I guarantee this is concept is on the exam, both the state exam that you're going to take and my exam at the end of this course. So make sure you understand that a listing agent uses a listing agreement and a property manager uses a management agreement. They are virtually the same concept, but the biggest difference is the agency that gets conferred to the agent. Remember, general agency can do multiple things for one area of life. So that property manager may sign a management agreement for 12 Smith Street, and he can now do several things. He's going to collect rent. He may screen the tenants. He may go to the bank and pay bills. He may enter into contractual obligations for that property, like lawn care or painting. So he could do multiple things. That is the big difference in this management agreement. It is general agent. 